Well, I don't know about you guys, but I want to talk about dreams. So, Ricky, this is actually a very interesting challenge this week because I've actually been interested in dreams and dreaming for a long time. When I was in middle school or, you know, early teens, I was really into dreams. I had books on dream signs and symbols and I was really into trying to figure out how to do lucid dreaming, you know, where you're kind of aware in your dream and you can make things happen because you know you're dreaming and that kind of thing. And I was really, really into dreams. I think for creative people especially, dreams are really interesting. I mean, I think my dreams are interesting. They're generally very elaborate and very strange, kind of surreal. I have a lot of very tense dreams and like dramatic kinds of dreams. And if I'm watching a lot of a certain television show or into something a lot in real life that'll come through strongly in my dreams. And back in the day I actually kept uh, dream journals for a while and which is something that I've kind of always wanted to start doing again because it's really interesting to look back at these because these are from like 2001, 1999, so when I was like 13 to 15 or 16 and it's uh it's a little disturbing to look into these and kind of look into my subconscious from when I was that age. I thought that I would actually share something that I wrote in my dream journal back in, what, 1999, which is when I was 13. Um, yeah, and <laughs> there were a lot of gems in here, I have to say, but uh, here's, here's just one sample of a dream I had. Two guys who look like things from Futurama are eating in this indoor city and they throw their trash on the floor. Some kids and I are with a group and we are going to eat. We go upstairs and wonder where we're supposed to eat. Then a line forms to get to the showers. When I get up, fully clothed like everyone else, I dunk my head under a faucet-like thing and put what I assume is shampoo in my hair. Then I leave, passing an actual shower that turns on as I pass under it. Back downstairs, Dad is mad at my brother for coming out of the showers naked. Mr. Kratz, who was my math teacher at the time, is there in a long green robe, giving out tickets for something. Then it starts to rain, and we know a flood is coming. Everyone panics, and most go upstairs in an elevator. I decide not to, because I don't want to get stuck upstairs or in an elevator. Some kid wants to take his horse to safety, but a man says the falcon will take care of it. Then he starts talking about the falcon swooping down to save children and such and such. As water starts covering the floor, I dash outside, passing two young women having a fight about someone sleeping with someone. Outside, the rain's about stopped, and I see a sculpture of a hand sticking up from the ground, towering above some miniature cities. And then, besides being my real self, I'm also a mini version of me, inside the palm of that hand and high off the ground. And to escape from this place, I push the hand down, and the small me falls inside the hand with almost lucid confidence until it reaches the city below. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I should start doing dream journals again. And if you've ever done a dream journal, or if you've ever wanted to, I suggest you try it, because it is actually very interesting to record your dreams and then to go back and look at these things that have gone on in your head and to try to figure out why or what they might mean or where these images might have come from. It's just, it's very strange. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little excerpt from my subconscious preteen life. Uh, I'll be interested to see if any of you have interesting dreams or dream-related stories to share in video response or comment form. And Ricky, I will see you tomorrow. And the rest of you guys, come on. Come on. I want you back. I miss you. Even JK. I think JK should come back too. I think I think we need to we need to get back together. Okay. Sweet dreams. <laughs>